Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. The Word of God is worth the drive. Hallelujah. <laughs> freedom! Turn to your neighbor. You want freedom? You got to pay the price. <laughs> there is a price to freedom. Glory to glory to glory. God is good. Shut the phones off. Throw them out. If you get caught with a phone on, it's a $50 fine. Hallelujah. So if you want your phone on, then bring a $50 bill with you. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. <laughs> yes. In his presence is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 18. Is everybody there? Remember, what you speak is what you eat. Amen. Confession brings possession. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. This is not a religious operation. This is a military operation. Amen. We are here to be trained up, be refreshed, be reconnected, and be reminded. That's why the Lord says, forsake not to assemble. In verse 18, is everybody there? Let's speak it. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are what? Perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the what? It is the power of God. So we see that the message of the cross, which is the message of life, amen, because Christ is a life giver, or the, is the gospel of truth, it's foolishness to those who haven't accepted the invitation. It's foolishness to them. They don't get it. In verse 19, it says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise and where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? So in other words, those who are of the world, the, the message of the cross is foolishness to them. They don't get it yet until so they're unplugged because they're still a part of the matrix. Amen? Verse 21. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, that word called means invited, those who are invited and accept the invitation, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many, not mighty, not many noble are called or invited. But God has given the foolish things to the world of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God the, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Again, the message of the gospel is a message of rescue. Amen? But many people have picked up the Bible and tried to read it or tried to learn it and couldn't. Because until you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, 
and maintain a position of being born again, it is very difficult to understand what this word says. Because it is interpreted by the Spirit and the scales are still on the eyes. On the understanding, because that's what it really means. You don't get the understanding without the Spirit of God. Is everybody okay? And so in this, we see that this is a message of life. And its purpose is to bring an escape or rescue to those who have been taken captive by deception or darkness and corruption. Which leads to destruction. Amen? Hmm. Well, what happens is be individuals live in a <laughs> holographic image processed by the carnal mind. And again, we call it the matrix. Living in the matrix. Did, have you ever seen the matrix movie? If you haven't, see it. It will bring you understanding because it is a point of reality. Living in the matrix. Remember, who rules this earth? Satan's kingdom. And everything, he, he controls it by deception and fear. That's how he controls it. His greatest weapon, weapon is deception. So he keeps people in the deceptive mindset. Because the battle is in the thoughts. He keeps them in a deceptive mindset so he can portray anything. Listen, if you believe something, you see it. So where there's a false perception brings a false percept where there's a false perception, it's created by a false doctrine. Something that you've agreed with. And now you see things. Did anybody ever go up to you and talk about someone? Don't raise your hands, please. I mean, they're telling you all kinds of stuff about this person or whatever. And then when you meet the person, it's totally wrong. Because that's that area a flawless. And that's what the enemy does in everything he can do. His purpose is to keep us in a, de a deceptive state of being so he can manipulate us and maneuver us. Amen? Remember, deception always leads to fear. Always leads to fear. There were a person is taken captive. Again, we call this the matrix, believing in, in, in this a realm by this carnal mind of ours. It's God's intention for us while we live in this place, in this maze, to keep us connected to him, to try and get us reconnected to him. But the enemy's purpose is to keep us away from God. He doesn't want you to know the truth. He'll put every false religion, doctrine, and everything he can in your way. He'll put every circumstance in your way that he can. To keep you from being connected. He even puts you in a church where there's nothing but stinky religion. People go to church, pay their tithes, but there's no power, so there's no presence, there's no worship. A couple songs, they do a couple hymns, and then walk away and go home and feel good because they went to church. But they haven't changed. Because they haven't given God the opportunity to change them. Amen? So in this is God's intention to get his out of this so we can get close to him. Remember, he already paid the price to get close to us. He hung on the cross, opened the portal so that he can access us and allow us to access him now. Is everybody all right? Praise God. One of the things that happened in this area where people fall into this um, flawed perception and they get occupied in the world. And in this world, it's called the world of survival. They stay busy. See, the enemy loves to get people busy. Where they don't get connected to God. So it's, they stay, live in a world of survival in hope of ach achieving a fulfillment. Every one of us wants to have a sense of fulfillment, of accomplishment, of fulfillment. We were born that way. But the enemy knows that we were born that way, so he's going to try and bring everything that's not of God's will to mislead us, keep us occupied, keep us busy. But God keeps sending out his invitation to us. He keeps sending out invitations all over the world. You know how, many how many times we rejected God's invitation? And then we found ourselves in more chaos? Rejection of, the, of this invitation will result in a false fulfillment it will result in corruption and destruction 
and sin that leads to death. And this will end up with an individual in hell. See, many people don't believe in a hell. Everyone that's there right now believes there's a hell. Amen? There's not one unbeliever in hell right now, I can guarantee you. But everyone that's there now is a believer. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 1. Ephesians 2, 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses or sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, which is demonic, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, B.C., before Christ. Amen. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive after we accepted the invitation, together with Christ, by grace, that means his plan. Again, I want to reemphasize, grace is not God's favor. You earn God's favor. Grace is God's plan to escape. People keep saying, I'm saved by grace. Yes, you are. You're saved by cooperating with the plan of God. But if you're not cooperating with the plan of God, you ain't saved. You just gave it up. Just like Esau sold it for a bowl of rice or whatever it was. I think it was Captain Crunch. By grace you have been saved. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, God's plan, you've been saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Now, this is powerful. So he made us alive from death. You and I were, did you ever hear about those walking dead people, zombies and whatever? We were zombies out there. Until Christ came and he took us from death, brought us into life, from survival into a life of surrender. He gave us truth. And he, something he gave us powerfully was a new identity. He gave us a new identity. <laughs> See, the enemy always wants to put back on the worldly identity. But God gives us a new identity. It's an eternal identity. And then in the processes of cooperation with the Holy Spirit, he brings us to a place where we are being fulfilled by God and not by man. We were taken from the basic courses of the foundations of the world, amen, ruled by Satan's kingdom and brought into another foundation with Christ Jesus. If you're willing to pay the price and cooperate, that is the price to everything. So many times people are expecting God to bring, just wave his hand over. And everything's brand new. No. When you call out to God for mercy, mercy means consider me. When he hears you humble enough, and some people have just never reached that humbleness yet. When he hears you humble enough, and you say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Then what he does is he releases his grace, which is his plan. And he always puts you in a place to learn so you don't get burned again. Amen? And then in that process, 
of transition. You're converting your soul. So what he wants to do is he wants to release us from the grip of deception and death. He wants to deliver us into the hands of grace to complete what he's called us to do. Living in a new realm and a new way of life. Living from the future, not from the past. Amen. Born of the spirit, not of the flesh. Walking away from the things of the world and into the things of eternity. No longer temporary living, but eternal living. But see, the enemy is always going to try and put something to replace it. His job is to bring me and you into another place of false fulfillment. Ephesians 1. I'll tell you the title in a few. Just keep taking notes. You'll get it. We're building a foundation before the title. <laughs> Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing. Hmm. And what else did he do? In where? Heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us. Whoa. So he chose you before he created everything. Because you were with him then. And he said, look, I gotta, I gotta, I'm, I'm doing a military operation. Do I have any volunteers? Everybody went, yeah, me, I'll go. He said, look, when you get there, you're going to forget me and everything about who you are. You'll lose your identity. But the, I won't forget you. I'll never forget you. I'll keep my eye on you. I'll give you many opportunities to, as an invitation to come out of that. Just don't let it take you all the way out. You'll have false fulfillments. You'll be misled. You're going to go through a lot of stuff. You're going to have heartaches. But don't forget, I am still there for you. Never, never lose sight. People will come across your path. They'll tell you about me. But then the enemy will come and steal that seed right away. But I won't forget you. Until you finally hit enough places and enough walls, bruise your head enough times. Disappoint yourself and everyone else enough times to where you get to a place of humility and you cry out for mercy and I'm on it. I'm on it. As soon as you say, Lord, forgive me, I'm on it. And I'll send my grace, I'll send people across your path and I'll direct you into a place where you and I can be restored, where you can be born again, where you can get your new identity of who you really are when you were with me. And I'll raise you up as a warrior I'll train you to fight and rescue all the rest of your brothers and sisters that have still been taken captive in the matrix that are deceived and in bondage. I mean, that's just the simple story of what's going on. We can go deeper, but we got more work to do. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So you and I have been, verse 5, having been, predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. It's his good pleasure. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. We are accepted. You know, a lot of people have a hard time of being accepted. Many of us have a hard time accepting love because of the things that were inflicted on us. When we came into this realm, Believe me, soon as you were conceived in this realm, the devil saw it. He said, I got to kill that person. I got to do everything I can to prevent that individual from getting connected back to the Father again. I got to do everything I can. See, that's why he sends all his demonic forces and everything. That's why there's an abortion. There's many military soldiers in Christ Jesus that didn't make it because they were aborted. Many. So the devil's out to kill you as soon as you were conceived. He knows. 
Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. In him, verse 7, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth in him. Wow. Look at verse 11. In him also we have obtained a what? An inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted Christ should be to the praise of his glory. And in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance to the redemption and purchase possession to the praise of his glory. You and I were predestined, we were accepted, we were adopted, we have an inheritance, and we have the promise of the power of the Holy Spirit. We have no excuse. But see, the enemy wants to steal every part of it. Anything that he can steal, he will. Anything you allow him to steal, he will. In Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. Let's speak it together. Romans 8, 28. Hallelujah. And we know that what? All things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. In other words, everything's going to work to the good as long as you maintain the acceptance of that invitation. Amen. I'm accepting it. Look at that invitation should be in your pocket all the time. You don't throw away his invitation. It's permanent. In fact, the invitation is called Holy Spirit. He's the seal of the invitation. You've been invited, and he's the seal. He's the promise of it. He said, no matter what's going to happen, I'm still, I'm still waiting for you. Even when you blow it, I'm still waiting for you. Amen? So we see that he, he's called us. He's invited us. Let's go a little further. Verse 29, for whom he what? For knew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That's his character, his likeness, power, and authority with dominion. Because everything is a preparation here for what's coming. Everything is preparation on planet for off planet. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. More for whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also called justified and whom he justified these he also glorified what then shall we say to these things if god is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things who shall bring a charge against god's elect it is god who justifies who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for me and you. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. God's love for you is constant. It's the enemy that breaches us receiving his love. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for your sake we're killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God 
which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, God's love is constant. His love is unconditional. Amen? He loves the wicked. Amen? He, do, he hates what they do. And the righteous. What did we just talk about last time we gathered? God sends out love warnings. They're love warnings. Why? Because he says he doesn't desire any wicked to perish. He wants them to repent. So there's nothing wrong with throwing them in jail and pray that they get salvation in jail. Amen? Praise God. So we're called, we're um, uh, foreknown, we're predestined to conform to his image as character of Christ. Again, his love for us is unconditional. Who can be against if God's for us? Amen? But there's an area where you got to know these things. See, the enemy comes and challenges you to see what you know. Why? Because he's more afraid of you than you are of him. But if he knows that you don't know who you are, he knows he can manipulate you, mislead you. He knows how to emotionally attack everyone. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 12. Romans 12. In verse 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let's speak it together. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. And do not be what? Conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, in this renewing of mind, because your mind can never be renewed, it's a representation of exchanging of thoughts. Exchanging of thoughts until the mind of Christ is formed. So you're exchanging thoughts. Amen? You're surrendering your carnal thoughts for eternal thoughts. Temporary thoughts for eternal thoughts. Now you're taking these eternal thoughts in God's wisdom and using it in this realm. So the wisdom of this world is no longer manipulating you, but the wisdom of God is using the wisdom of the world to work for you. There's a difference. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind or the exchanging of your thoughts so that the mind of Christ can be formed that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we know that there is a process of exchange. Amen? And in it, that's what takes cooperation. So we must continue in the exchange of the worldly mind of thoughts to the spiritual, eternal mind of thoughts. Forming the mind of Christ in the thoughts of Christ to overcome all thoughts of temptation in the emotional lust that war against the new creation in Christ. And Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61. Well, first three verses. And this was a prophetic release from Isaiah. He was talking about Christ coming in and being Christ being the anointed one. Amen. Which is the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. 
called the anointing. And that that would fall to me and you. Because we are now his offspring. So when you speak 61, you are confessing this. You're, you're calling this on you. So everyone speak it with me, all right? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Now, he doesn't mean financially poor. He means the, those that do not have the understanding. And the next, he has sent me to heal the what? Broken hearted. How does a person get a broken heart? I mean, there's many ways, but. But what is a broken heart? It's an emotional attack. Amen? I want you to look at something very powerful here. To proclaim liberty to those who have been taken captive. To the opening of prisons to those who are bound. Well, people are bound by emotional attachments. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year, Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all who mourn another emotional problem, to counsel those who mourn in Zion, and give them beauty for ashes, and oil of joy for what? Mourning. That's emotional. The garment of praise for the spirit of what? Heaviness. That's emotional that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? That he may be what? Glorified. The Holy Spirit anointing power, presence, and truth of God Almighty, carried by the Spirit, to assist our conversion. To assist us in warfare against the attacks of the unseen entities we call evil spirits and demons. Heal the brokenhearted, freedom from captivity, open prisons to the bound, comfort the mourning, all oil of joy for mourning, praise for heaviness. All of this is emotional oppression. Everyone say emotional oppression. It's emotional oppression, which I want you to know that fear is also an emotional oppression. These are unclean. People don't realize it. They just call them emotions. They are unclean emotions. Does everybody get this? They are unclean emotions. Why? Because they connect to a spirit that's unclean. And what they do with these, un they, they, they're unclean, and they bring torment. And what they do is they cause an individual to seek a false fulfillment because they must get fed. Demons must get fed, and they get fed by emotion. These are unclean emotions. Ecclesiastes 4. It says that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit to free and heal everyone that was taken captive by oppression from the devil. Ephesians 4. I mean, Ecclesiastes 4, sorry. <laughs> Ecclesiastics. Sounds like an exercise. Well, Ecclesiastics tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God we're not religious. Amen. Lord, it would have thrown me out a long time ago. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 6, 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. Then I returned and considered all the what? Oppression that is done under the sun. And look, the tears of the oppressed. But they have no comforter. On the one side of their oppressors, there is power. But they have no comforter. Therefore, I praise the, the dead who are already dead. More than the living who are still alive. Why? Because they're tormented by oppression. Yet better than both is he who has never existed. This guy's heavy, man. Who has not seen the evil 
work that is done under the sun. So you got to understand that Solomon, who wrote this, who was a man of great wisdom, he said, man, there's something I realized that oppression of mankind is intense. It's an emotional destruction to mankind. He began to realize that emotion, now God gave us emotion, but it wasn't to be, we are not to be controlled or led by emotion. Our emotion should be peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, which is God's love now. But the world's emotion is different. They look for emotion. They look for fulfillment. Because to them, an emotional fulfillment is everything. The problem is it doesn't last. It goes away just like that. Then they look for another one, just like an addict. Looking for another hit, looking for another bottle, looking for another drink, looking for another whatever. Looking for a fulfillment that's false. Why? Because they're looking for an emotional fulfillment. And it was brought on by the enemy. Oppressed, oppression, guilt. Unworthiness, fear. These, all these emotionals stem from a powerful, powerful spirit. And they originates. He loves, once that spirit allow, is allowed access, an emotional domino effect begins. It all stems from an evil spirit that knows that it can start a whole chain of events that can destroy a life that God created. This spirit comes to steal your new identity in Christ. He comes to kill every righteous seed and works and to destroy the fulfillment and fulfilling of your destiny. I'm going to say this again. The spirit comes to steal your new identity in Christ. Comes to kill all righteous seeds and works. And he comes to destroy you fulfilling your destiny. Again, all of these areas. Because there's an emotional bail going on all the time. All of these stem from this spirit. He's a powerful spirit. And this spirit is called rejection. This rejection will start a domino effect. If you allow rejection, everyone's going to be rejected, but it's whether you allow it to affect you or not. It leads to offense and everything else. People are offended, feel like they're rejected. People get angry because they're rejected. People pray to God, and God doesn't answer them. They feel God rejected them. Something happens to them. They got hit by a car. They got raped when they were young. Whatever it is, that's an, what, who allowed that? Not God. Because, see, we're to be raised up with truth. The problem is, is most of us weren't. We were raised up with religion and all kinds of other stuff. None of us was ever taught. Believe me, I never heard about demons until they came out of my body. I mean, I saw them, but I didn't know who they were. Believe me, they lived in my house for many years. They used to hide my dope on me and everything. I mean, they tormented me constantly. And they, I, even when I was straight, which was maybe for 20 minutes. But there were days when I tried to clean up so I can get high again. I lived to get high. I'd go in saunas and eat well and everything. Then I'd go do dope for a week. Get drunk, go on my binges. And then when I come down, man, I'd see these things. See, your senses are so intense when you have demons in you. I could hear doors shut at the airport. And I was 40 miles away. Believe me, they were all over on my curtains. I would wake up in the morning and they'd be in front of me. I'd see these red eyes. And after I got saved, they still tried to come and attack me. But I knew how to fight then. But again, everything stems from a simple acceptance of rejection. Something that happened in your life 
that you sensed you were rejected. Somebody said something to you, and you got angry and offended, and you held bitterness, unforgiveness. All of those things kept you bound. And all of these things are unclean, which opens a door. It's a connection, because these are what we call emotional attachments, of unclean emotional attachments to a demon. Every single one of them has a spirit attached to it, and they will torment you until you finally cut them loose. People are still holding on to things. Listen, there isn't one person in this room that's not regretted what they've done at some time. So you can allow that regret to torment you the rest of your life. You know what regret is? Self-rejection. It's self-rejection. You're blaming yourself for what you were influenced by the enemy. Why do people commit suicide? Oppression. And it's amazing because, see, in the world, the world wants to keep people in captivity. They want to keep an under management. So a person is oppressed because they've been rejected in their fear. They run to the doctor. The doctor gives them a pill, a pill to say, here, you're now on antidepressants. But the side effect is suicide. So, and it's all a lie. And then they go deeper. And they go start right over where they were from right to the beginning. Addicted. All over. See, again, there's that difference between management and freedom. Only the one that created you can free you. And he's the only one. All of these programs, all of this other stuff, and it's not about a program. We need to be discipled to be free because we need to have the tools to fight spiritually, not physically, because this battle is spiritual, not physical. Emotions are not physical. They are spiritual. And the enemy knows exactly how to reconnect us if we let him. Is everybody okay? Okay. That spirit is the leading spirit, and it stems to so much destruction in people's lives, in relationships. See, what happens is if you're looking for a fulfillment from something or someone and you don't get it, the enemy comes immediately and says, you're rejected. She doesn't love you. He doesn't love you. The Lord doesn't love you. And a driver that just hits you don't love you. But he might have got out of his car and tried to help you. Even mistakes, no matter what. Why? So when that person allows that spirit to come, and that person falls into oppression and this rejection, they're still looking for another fulfillment. And the enemy will bring every false fulfillment available. Why? Because in that, there's not a clear sight, state mind. You can't think clearly. That's what the enemy wants to put anybody on medication so they can't think clearly. And you'll hear every voice that's around. And you'll you still stay oppressed no matter what. Only God is our fulfillment. Amen? Only God is our fulfillment. Is everybody okay? Go to John 10. Everyone in this room has been rejected multiple times, even by themselves. Look in a mirror sometimes. Some people just don't like the way they look. See, because they're looking for a fulfillment in how they look, when their fulfillment should be in Him. You did a job, you did it wrong, you failed something. You, the, the enemy will attack you with reje rejection every time. Oh, you're no good. That's rejection. Oh, you should have studied harder. You'd have passed. That's rejection. The word says all things can work to the good to those who love him and call according to his purpose. No matter what's going on, the enemy's first attack is rejection. Because he knows that can create a domino effect with other spirits that open up. 
Look at what's going on in the world right now. They are promoting the spirit of rejection. They're promoting the spirit of oppression. They're promoting the spirit of fear. So look at what happens when a person is bound by fear. They look to fulfill it, but when they try to fulfill it to get something, it doesn't come. They get rejected. They sense rejection all over again. Remember, this is an emotional battle. In John 10.10, 10, is everybody there? In verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, that same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, and to him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will no, mind, no means follow a stranger. Is the spirit of rejection a stranger? Yes. How about doubt, unbelief? How about oppression? How about discouragement? How about unworthiness? How about heaviness? How about sorrow? All of these things. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the strangers. Because they're a new creation in Christ, they actually do know the voice of the stranger, but they're now allowing that voice of the stranger because they're now a new creation. Does everybody got it? Now that they're a new creation in Christ, that voice of the stranger has been recognized for a long time. No, 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 you're not getting near me. No. But I'm going to tell you, he's going to keep knocking. Like I said, don't answer the door. Who's there? Rejection. Oh, you ain't got no place in here. Don't even ask who's there. Amen? Who told you that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal. What's he stealing? Your identity. He's going to kill your what? Righteous seeds and works. And he will destroy your fulfillment of destiny. I have come that they may have what? Life. And that they may have it what? More abundantly. That means that we've got to get in divine position with cooperation by the Spirit. Being ready. Alert. Consistent. Disciplined. See, without discipline, you'll always be led by how you feel. You must have discipline over your emotions, over your soul, over your thoughts. you got to ask yourself, where did that thought come from? Is this thought pleasing God? Or is it pleasing me? Amen? Is it fulfilling a desire? You know, everybody has a desire. But the problem is, is when it's not met, they feel rejected. Oh, Ephesians 4. If God will lead his people... And they will recognize the voice of the strangers. Amen? Remember, rejection is the source of all emotional offense, insecurity, fears, and bitterness, and hatred, and so forth. It is one of the leading causes of addiction. It starts with rejection. It is the leading cause. We know that that spirit is inherited. Why? Because the spirit of a rejection has been inherited. Ephesians 4.17. Hallelujah. We have a penetrating prayer book. I encourage you this week to hit that spirit of rejection prayer. Nail it. Because that's what's being released more and more. Spirit of rejection. It's being released by the enemy to try and cause that domino effect and open doors. Many people are falling away again. Why? Because they've accepted the spirit of rejection. 
Ephesians 4, 17. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind or of their what? Thoughts. Having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past what? Feeling. Have given themselves over to lewdness, to the work of uncleanness with greediness. But you've not so learned Christ, if you have heard of him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off. You put off these things. Concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Now, what is lust? It's an overwhelming desire. An overwhelming desire is called addiction. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind or the thoughts of your mind, so that you put on the new man, the new man with the mind of Christ, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of one of you speak truth with his neighbor. If we are members of one another, be angry and do not what? It's called righteous anger. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Giving place to the devil starts over with spirit of rejection. You allow rejection. Why? Because unforgiveness, bitterness, offense are all open doors to demonic activity. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but that which is necessary for edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for redemption. Let bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, Evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God forgave you. Wow. Rejection leads to protection of self. Hmm. It puts a person in survival mode, not surrender mode. It builds walls of false protection. They are actually, the enemy's got them. When that door opens up, that person now, the enemy actually has them in self-protection, they're still protecting their emotions that they're actually building walls around them and enslaving themselves. They're imprisoning themselves. Bringing bondage. It leads to unforgiveness, hatred, and then the works of the flesh. Because see, works of the flesh come by false fulfillment. Galatians 5, and then we'll do one more scripture after this. Everybody okay? Rejection. It is a spirit. It is a demon. And it is evil. It's very powerful. It knows that it can cause a domino effect in a person's life. Again, everybody's going to fall in a place of rejection. It's what you do with it. Everyone's going to fall in a place of offense, but what you're going to do with it. Many people accept it. I've been offended today. So what? You going to carry it with you? I've been rejected today. Praise God. I can tell you one who will never reject you. Amen? Again, we got to turn this stuff around. We got to come out of the physical and get into the spirit. You know, in many marriages... The man or woman have turned into opposite sex because of rejection. Or the same sex, I'm sorry. They've divorced one another and gone to the same sex because of the abuse of a husband or abuse of a wife. They turned. And they quack. How did that, re, how did that homosexual or lesbian spirit come? By rejection. Molestation. Rape. That spirit entered in. And have had a domino effect. God didn't make us that way. We weren't born that way. I hear that all the time. Well, I was born that way. No way. 
There's somewhere you, you allowed rejection and you accepted it. And then it had a domino effect and brought every other spirit with them. And now there's a flawed belief system with a flawed perception. They, they're convinced that they're a man when they're a woman. They're convinced they're a woman when they're a man. Why? Right, it's all here. And it's in an emotional state. But in that realm, it's the highest suicide there is. It's the highest suicide. Why? Because they don't have a true identity. They're uncertain of it. They try to make it, but they know that it isn't true. But they'll convince themselves and they'll even lie. But they know it's not true. Then they have operations that go all through, have hormonal changes, all kinds of things. You don't think they got emotional problems? You bet you they do. And it all started with rejection. Ephesians 5.16. I mean Galatians 5.16. Did you miss the title? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, hon. <laughs> I don't want you to feel rejected. <laughs> I just did. Rejection. <laughs> Hallelujah. See how much you can miss if you have to go to the bathroom? Hallelujah. Verse 16. Galatians 5. Let's speak it. I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that they do not do the things that they wish or desire. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of sin and death. Now the works of the flesh, now remember... It usually ends up to where people end up in the works of the flesh because of that started off with the spirit of rejection. This is the works of the flesh. They're evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is also associated with drugs, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries and the like of which I tell you beforehand just as I also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit eternal life or the kingdom of God. That blows the theology of once saved always saved, don't it? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires or its unclean emotions. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit and let us be, not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. The enemy knows. He knows what you're trying to accomplish. He knows everything about us. And he's going to try to bring every place possible a place of rejection. I'm going to close at 1 Timothy 4. Remember, we were called to battle of a purpose to destroy Satan's kingdom, and our destiny is to infiltrate the world system. And rescue souls that have been taken captive. First Timothy chapter four. Is everybody all right? Are you learning something? Hallelujah. Verse one. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, or in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what. Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy are having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. So these are people that were believers. They got moved out. 
forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. Nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nursed in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor, oh, hallelujah, and suffer. We suffer, we labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. So what you heard tonight, tonight I can tell you, you'll be tested on. Amen? You'll be tested. Every one of us gets tested after, after impartation. Just be alert, be aware, and don't accept it. Amen? Because you're more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to protect this seed that's been imparted so that it grows and bears fruits for your glory. And bring to remembrance those things as prepare us for the next testing session that we may be faithful to overcome the next exam in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.